two teaspoons salt to one quart of warm water. Okay, got it. Thank you so much, Lisa. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Dave, you take the phone call while I write this down while I can remember it. Hi, this is Dave. Where are all my notepads? Hi, Jamie. Oh, we're in a bind, I guess. We, we need a nurse out here to our house tonight. Give us some help. This is Emily. She was having a real rough day. <laughs> but we call that the happy family because obviously we weren't happy by the end of the day. This one right here of Bob holding one of his nephews. He was talking to him and he said, Hi Dominic, I'm your Uncle Bob. I'm sorry that you won't ever really know me. Yeah. That's... <laughs> Okay, so I forgot his one as a pen too. Okay. There are pills for every symptom almost of Huntington's disease. To try and make them a little easier. Give them quality of life, but sometimes I wonder. You ready to get up? Yeah. How do you feel? Uh -huh. was, was that okay or fine? Fine. Fine? Just fine? My condolence is feeling insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Okay, you lift your feet. Put them back straight again, Put them back straight. Out to the end of the bed. There you go. Good job, good job. Ready? One, two, three. Put back, Bob. Oh, you get it. The sound you hear is an oxygen concentrator. He's developed uh, red spots that can very easily turn into bed sores and we need to get oh, him up. Okay. How's that, Bob? That be okay for drinking? Mm -hmm. okay. My name is Susie. I am 66 years old and I have just recently retired from nursing and uh, learning to adjust. My family really starts with my first marriage. We learned about Huntington's disease when his mother was diagnosed. We had no idea, had never heard of the disease till then. Of course, by then we had had our kids. And my husband was diagnosed in 1990. I worked a night shift at the hospital, 12 hour shifts. Half of my paycheck was going to pay that person to take care of my husband. My husband passed away and less than 12 hours later, the sheriff was on my door with foreclosure papers. And I had two weeks to be out of my house, so I lost my husband, I lost my home, all within 12 hours. All of my kids are at risk for HD. Emily is my youngest. While I was still working, Emily would get home around 3 o'clock. The part-time caregiver would leave and go home for the day. Uh, as a result, Emily really wasn't allowed to even have a childhood, which I feel terrible about looking back on it. Scary and not fun at all. And she took a lot of abuse from her mom and it it took her years to realize that that wasn't mom talking from the heart, that was Huntington's disease striking out at whoever was close and unfortunately it happened to be Emily. Uh, I met Dave through an online support group for Huntington's disease and uh, the last uh, two and a half years that his wife was alive, I was her primary caregiver. We were helping each other out because I was a nurse, he needed help with Paula. I needed a place to stay so I could keep my job. I sat with her quite a bit and she told me she was tired. 
she was hurting. I was upstairs getting my hair done. Emily was upstairs getting ready for to go to a wedding that evening. My friend Yvonne was upstairs with me. I came down about 15 or 20 minutes later. Susie went running downstairs, said she's gone, she's gone, and I knew it. So it's like I have a burnt in image of her in the hospital bed, so. So fun. With Paula, it was just hard. <laughs> there you go. First saw signs in Bob when he was 18. He didn't test, though, until he was 29. And I've heard him say many times, I didn't cry when I was diagnosed. I knew it was there. Okay, I'm going to live with it. And then he'll say, and that's the thing. I'm living with HD. I'm not dying from it. We try to keep in caring for him on day to day. We uh, try to keep it light and humorous. When he's having the really bad days and it gets too much for us, sometimes we have to take turns building each other up. Bob is my firstborn. I was supposed to grow old with my children and my grandchildren around me, coming in and out. And that's not my life. It's not my children's life. Not the life I saw for them. And sometimes that's really hard. <laughs> hey. Okay, hey, 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 look at me, look at me. Relax. Slow, deep breath, in, not a gas, slow, deep. I feel bad for my dad and Susie because they're always, sh not stressed, but it's like, you can see it's pulling on their heart strings, and I can see my dad affected by it as much as Susie is. And I don't know of anything more tragic than this disease. Before I knew about this, I would have said the same thing about cancer, about polio, about Parkinson's, about any of these things, Alzheimer's, anything that is a devastating family type disease. And I can't think of anything that doesn't affect the entire family. And boy, you better have your family surrounded. Bobby is end stage. Uh, he is currently under hospice care. It's still alive. He's still a real person in there. Uh, there's a real heartbeat. There's a real brain. And he might not be able to, ex to express himself verbally, but I know he's in there. little town that I'd ever seen. Women there don't treat you mean in Abilene, my Abilene. I sit around most every night, watching them train just pull out of sight. Wish to the Lord they were scaring. First times that I, please God, if this is the best it's going to be for him, just take him now. I don't want to see my baby suffer. What parent does? 
Mamas are supposed to make everything better. They're the protector of their child. I can't protect my child. I can't save him. I can't pay thousands, millions, whatever it takes to find a doctor somewhere that can have a miracle that's going to change our outcome. My baby's going to die. Mamas and daddies shouldn't have to bury their children. Sarah is not on tonight. She's wondering if it can wait until tomorrow when she will be here to see him. Or do you want me to go ahead and call hospice and get somebody out tonight? I want somebody out tonight. Yeah, she wants somebody out tonight. And yet, there I am, raising my voice at him. And it's hard. You love them beyond all measure. And then you raise your voice or you get exasperated or frustrated with them and you let it show. And then you beat yourself up. What kind of a mother talks to their child who is dying that way? No matter how ready you are, you're going to realize you're not ready. And it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to let people know you're hurting. Thank you. Love you guys. Love you too, baby girl. This is not your fault. You could not control it. This is not something you can control. It's part of the deal. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We've both been down the entire path together once. We're facing it again with our kids. And it doesn't make it any easier. It's still still a very tough path to go down. We're doing it together. We're able to cope better, I think, than the first time. Is it sad? Of course it's sad. Uh, no person should have to do that. No family should have to do that alone. Did I do a good job? Oh. Uh. Huh? Uh. What? No. Hey, watch it. I could retire, and then where would you be? <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah, in heaven. <laughs> in heaven. Thanks. <laughs> I, huh? I love you. I love you too. I'm thankful for Huntington's disease. It's given me what I have today. I hate Huntington's disease for everything it's taken from me. You can choose to just dwell on the bad stuff or you can look at the good stuff that, co that comes from it. It'll never be over. And she said, well, then what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? I said, I fight. Bobby, and so it says one big hug after another. Here's one from me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was